Welcome back to another new world video. In this video, we're going to go through the question which is flying around all of the YouTube and Twitch streams and videos at the minute. And that question that's being asked by almost every single viewer that comes into these chats, unless they're still continually playing New World, is should you return to New World? So in this video, we're just going to go through as many things as we possibly can. We're going to try and give you all of the possible information you could possibly need to make your decision right now should you come back to new world we'll go through things like the, the roadmap the weapons the quality of life changes uh, the dungeons at the minute the state of them the orb system which so many people don't like all the new loot the new quests been added to the games even new skins in the store the economy and uh, even how well is this game doing and i'm not talking about the people who just write oh my god new world has five thousand players or something stupid like that because one website at, you know 5 a.m. says that there's 5,000 people in, in your region playing the game, right? Let's, 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 let's be real here. There's probably not going to be a lot of people playing the game at 5 a.m. on a Monday morning, for example, okay? So we'll use the proper metrics. We'll bring them all up in this video, and we'll go through them. And like I said, we'll give you as much information as possible. One quick thing I'd like to ask, though, if you want to be an absolute legend, drop a sub and a like on this video, and some comments down below, and genuine comments, okay? Once you've watched this video, or as we're going through... If you want to give your opinion on any of the things I, I, I talk about in this video, that'd be great. Use that comment section, like I said, drop a sub, all that kind of stuff. And also, if you want to check me live on Twitch, feel free. I'll pop the link on the screen now. It's just twitch.tv forward slash Liam H. Let's anyway, let's get into the video and let's give you all the information you need. Okay, a quick one on the content roadmap. So the developers from the game, they released a uh, YouTube video on, on the official New World channel uh, probably over a week ago now. They announced the roadmap, which is really, really exciting, because at least now, as players, you get to look at this and then make a decision. Do you want to come back in spring, summer, autumn? Do you want to come back right now so you're ready for all of the upcoming events that they're adding? But essentially, if you want to have a look, obviously, on screen now at exactly what they're adding, just in case you've not seen this, in the months of spring, they're adding the Tempest Heart Expedition, which is now obviously in the game. They're adding the new weapon, the Blunderbuss, which is now in the game. And then one thing that I requested on this channel, if you don't believe me, go back to the video I posted in February. I requested PvP arenas. I said this could be potentially huge for the game. So many PvP players out there that just don't really have a proper, you know, source uh, of or a function in the game to play PvP. Once that becomes officially competitive as well, I think it's just a prediction that that honestly could be so big for the game people like to, to to compare themselves around the world and on their server and see who's the best you know 3v3 team even 1v1s all that kind of stuff so that's really good uh, the pvp reward track they're going to add in there as well we don't have a lot of information on that so we'll have to see over into summer you've got another brand new dungeon so for anybody saying oh you've only got lazarus and genesis in this game you get to end game there's nothing to do well we'll talk about that later on in this video but there you go, you got one new brand new endgame dungeon in Tempest there, which is already out now. You got the Barnacles and Black Powder Expedition as well, that's coming in the summer, which is, which is, I, I'm hoping it's going to be good. It's going to be a lost based dungeon as well, so that mixes it up. Um, they're adding the Expedition Group Finder. A lot of people don't like spamming in the, in the global chats and the recruitment chats asking for, for a group, so they're adding this in, similar to WoW, I would imagine. I think that could be pretty good. They're adding in a summer event, so anybody who likes that kind of stuff, the Winter Convergence event which we had obviously several months ago now. That was actually really good. I think it was a really good feature to the game. It looked amazing. Some of the functions in there was pretty good. Some of the rewards were pretty decent. And then over into the autumn, you got the Brimstone Sands territory coming out. Brand new territory, finally. Um, another expedition. So there's three brand new expeditions. We don't know if that's going to be an endgame one. We also don't know if the Barnacles is going to be endgame. I would imagine it would be uh, speculative at this moment. But I would imagine these will be endgame. Uh, another new weapon as well, Greatsword. Uh, that's been added in the leaderboards. I think this links back to the 3v3 PV, uh, PvP arenas. I'm not too sure why it takes them so long to get the uh, leaderboards function. I'm also not a game developer, so I'm sure if they ever reached out to me, they would tell me exactly why that takes so long, but fair play, they're bringing it in there, they, you know, they, they popped that in there as well, the Night Vale, uh, what is essentially a Halloween event is going to be coming out, and then they'll be bringing back Turkey as well, which was pretty fun, um, you know, random global spawning fucking 30 foot turkey, I mean, hey, listen, it was, it was fun, okay, it's fun, so here's the roadmap anyway, if anyone who's not seen it, there are all the things that they're planning to add, they also mentioned in this dev update, that they could even add further to this as well so if you're looking at this and thinking oh it's a little burr maybe 
maybe well they're gonna be adding even more as well okay now like we said on to weapons if you quit this game incredibly early maybe in that opening month you probably won't even have seen the fact that there's a void gone added similar to the ice gold but obviously there's void really really good stacks with intelligence and and uh, some focus in as well healers use it's also good for some dps aspects so yeah they added a void gauntlet like a month or two after the game uh, was released so that's the, that's the first new weapon they added and then the latest one is the blunderbuss as you can see here i this is not a specific build so do not judge me on this uh, i was just picking these just, just to have a little mess around but uh yeah blunderbuss short range weapon if you've not heard much about this it's obviously going to be nothing like the uh, the musket whatsoever it stacks from either strength or intelligence Technically a bit of both, depending on how you're working your build. But uh, it's actually pretty fun. We'll mention the quality of life updates that they've added to this game as well um, later on in the video. But essentially, as you can see here, I don't have any cartridges or obviously arrows whatsoever. Yeah, I can rock out this uh, blunderbuss and I'll give you a little you know, a quick show over here. Bog standing attack if we run up close to this one here. No, no cartridges whatsoever. We can still shoot, right? I'll just have a little play around with it just to show how, how it works when it's firing. I'll show you some of the skills. You got some splitting grenades that you can fire. And these ping out the do some explosions. You've got like a, a blast shot here we can use. It's actually pretty cool. And then we can ping these. The Thunderbus is actually really, really fun. Um I, I've only used it a little bit. One of the most fun ones that people like to use here is this mortar shot. It's, it's really fun. It's especially when you're grouping up all these enemies, you know, in in, in the bigger places. It, it's a fun little weapon to use, you know. Like I said, short to mid-range weapon there. You, you wouldn't you wouldn't go try and ping in people from like 50 to 100 meters away. But it's fun, you know. The functionality of it's fun. There's a lot of utility skills you can use if, you, if you're looking to make this kind of like a PvP build. Something to go along with. Uh, oh, just stay away from there, you know. We'll have to see that in the video. But yeah, no, essentially it's a, it's, it's a really good little addition of, of a weapon. The fact that you don't have to carry cartridges around the, with you if you don't want to. Like I said, we'll speak more about that later on, but a good little weapon. It mixes things up a little bit as well. You know, adding in more weapons to Void Gauntlet than I had in months and months ago. The Blunderbuss. They got the um, the Great Sword that they're announced for, for later on in the in the, uh, in, in the year as well. But um, we recently had the Double XP Weekend. This is how I managed to get the rest of my weapons up to 20. But yeah, you know, it's another brand new weapon to the game. If you're interested in new weapons and then they're finally being added... This is this is a good thing to see, you know. Um, the great sword I think could be really, really good as well. I want to see how different that's going to be compared to obviously the standard sword and then also the great axe because I'm pitching great sword and whirling blades and stuff, and I don't know how that's going to work. Uh, but it'll be good to see once they add that. But yeah, in terms of new weapons in the game, these are all the ones that are currently out at the moment. There's plenty of space at the bottom here for more. But yeah, Void Gauntlet added several months ago. Blunderbuss just added. In terms of should you come back to the game when it comes to weapons interested in any of these in your builds could be something to think about okay now on to the quality of life changes that they've added since launch and that they've added very very recently with this march update now there's probably many more that i won't even mention on this video because we would be here all day but i'll mention some of the key ones now i've tried to pick some of the ones out where i've seen a lot of people in my twitch chat for example mention it in the past and just moaned about it and before these were all changed obviously um now let's go with yazov travel okay you know, the maximum as off you could have was was, was, was 500, uh, sorry, was 1,000, I don't know where I got 500 from, it was 1,000, and then to, to fast travel around, depending on how much item weight you were carrying, and depending on how far you were going, and depending on what the faction uh, that you were going to, this used to cost a absolute ton, sometimes six or 700 as much as of, which basically means you could do one fast travel around the map, and then that's it, you're out. Now, I'm currently here in Everfall, and I've got some item weight on me, not a ton, but as you can see here, if I want to travel here, it's 20 as off, okay? If I want to travel to a green location, it's 20 as off. If I want to travel all the way to the probably the furthest away I can I can pick, it's it's 20 as off, okay? There's some places where it's a little bit cheaper, because obviously where we've cut this keys, 12 as off. They have capped the as off travel around the map to 20. That is the absolute maximum you'll ever pay, okay? You've got 1,000 stacked in there. Also, earning Azov just from general killing mobs and, and picking up chests and stuff is insane, okay? Like, I've not bought any of these, but as you can see here, I have 160 vials, which you can also use for crafting, so they will come in handy at some point. I have 100. You're essentially, you've got maxed out Azov. You can fast travel around the map as much as you want, okay? They've also reduced the, uh, the cooldowns to your inn and your house massively. 
um I, I think the cooldowns has come down to uh two hours for the house for example uh, obviously pay your taxes and stuff like that uh re reduced to the inn as well is really really short and i think it's been reduced to 30 minutes to recall to your inn so in terms of anybody who complained or moaned or didn't like the fact that azov costs so much to fast travel you have to do all that running there's no mounts for example this issue has now been completely and utterly solved like i said even people go oh it still costs 20 trust me if you were playing the game right now you would realize you earn 20 from killing the average mob every now and again you will not run out of azov okay you can fast travel around the map as much as you want okay it's a huge quality of life change that they've done now other things that they've done as well there is an out of combat health regen now okay so when you're running around and you had to always consume food or you had to have like a perk on one of your uh, jewelry in order to give you that uh, life regeneration this has now been changed so you'll always have a small amount of out of combat health regen so that, that's pretty good in my opinion um inventory as well we did mention that uh the we mentioned that the uh, I'm trying to word this correctly so, so you understand uh, the ammo essentially okay so you don't need to carry ammo for your weapons anymore okay you will do a flat 1.0 your base damage of your of, of your of your for example blunderbuss or musket or bow you don't need to have any however if you were to get some bullets or some cartridges you know for uh, for example or a calcum ones or star metal they'll give you like one uh, 1.2 percent oh sorry 1.2 damage or 20 percent increase basically or 30 percent increase depending on the type of ammo but the ammo also doesn't weigh anything okay and ammo has also now been stacked into maximums of a thousand rather than 500 so you can carry a ton more of this it doesn't weigh anything if you do want to carry any of those cartridges with you and stuff like that i think that's a really good change another one inventory okay so i don't have um, mine equipped here at the minute but they have doubled the inventory limits from all of your towns where you have chests so if you've got a bunch of chests that have 400 uh weight capacity in each of them they all now double to 800 there's like a mini bug in the game at the minute where you have to re-equip them in your house that's why it's not showing on here but um that's really quickly fixed but yeah essentially the amount of storage you have in all of the towns where your where, where your houses are if you've got the chests it's been doubled it's so so good but also another thing here as well the old function here was you had to be within the same faction. So let's say I'm chilling in Everfall. And let's just pretend, you know, I'm on the yellow team, even though I'm Syndicate. Uh, if I wanted to drag some items from First Light, because they're also owned by yellow, you could do this, but it would cost you money. And the money that it used to cost was ridiculous. You might want to bring over some clam chowder food, and it asks you for 25 gold. And you're like, really? Or, you know, you'd want to bring over 350 of this, and it'd ask you for like 400 gold. And you're like, this is ridiculous. It's now been changed. Okay, so I'm a Syndicate. Okay, if I want to go to Monarch's Bluff, if I want to bring this axe, boom, straight into the inventory, absolutely free. You can move items wherever you want, okay? Pick a place, you know, Mountain Rise, there's nothing there, Oracle Gringotts, boom, done. You can move your items from anywhere to anywhere for absolutely free. I think this is huge, and especially for storage people and crafters and all this kind of stuff and all that as of traveling you had to do in the past when you forgot something for your crafting and you had to you know pour back and then pour here and then pour, oh, you know you've got your corruption potions that you need or whatever right you can just move it all wherever you want huge quality of life update in my opinion so that's a really really good one uh that, that, that they brought in there I, I think everybody's happy with that one now you know other quality of life updates that they've added a while ago they added perk filtering into the market i've seen a couple of youtube videos here uh very recently which in my opinion was a little bit annoying they opened up the um the you know the the, the store here the, the tp sorry and they were like oh you can't filter on anything you can it's all here you pick the perk that you want to you know you want to filter on whatever that may be and and then it'll it'll filter the, those into it only shows you the weapons that have them if they don't have them on there they don't have them on there you know so they added that a very long time ago but i've seen some youtube videos recently and it really wound me up because i was like why are you telling people in your video that they still don't have the filtering because they absolutely do now quality of life updates in general it's just huge there's just so many in the game but i think there's some of the biggest ones to mention i think there's some ones i've seen so many people quit this game because i even seen one guy months ago uh, he quit the game because he tried to fast travel somewhere with the last of his azov it failed it was just like a mini bug and then it took the azov from him so he couldn't fast travel there anymore that guy has never logged into the game since and i'm talking december okay the guy's not logged into the game a guy i know it's ridiculous but yeah in terms of quality of life changes there are many these are some of the big ones i think you'll enjoy them let me know in the comment section down below if you do or don't okay on to dungeons right a lot of people oh, expeditions is the call the new world a lot of people uh, quit the game this is another reason again should you come back to the game a lot of people quit the game originally 
because from the end game, there was only Genesis and Lazarus playing. That was it. It was the only two dungeons you could really do at end game. Dynasty was below that level, I think, like 52. So you wouldn't run that. The gear would be would be absolutely pointless. Um, but yeah, so now what they've added, as we've seen on the roadmap earlier, they've added a brand new end game dungeon, Tempest Heart. Uh, this goes along with the story, which I won't spoil in this video, but it's all about coming up against Isabella again. A ton of mobs in there, a ton of new loot and all that kind of stuff in there. Loads of new stuff. Um, but yeah, essentially they've added this brand new dungeon um, up in, in Mirkwood region, up here at the top. And uh, I'm not going to lie, I've run this several times. It was pretty tough the first couple of times. But what, a, what a great dungeon. Honestly, it was so, so good. Um, so there's one new dungeon. We also know about the other dungeons that they've added in there as well. Uh, all that, sorry on the roadmap to be added in the future another thing they've done as well for anybody who doesn't know this they added this a couple months back uh, but essentially the gear score that you can now get has gone from 600 to 625 and i'll link this back to dungeons now you could have had for example your void event which you worked so hard for you know several months back and you're like oh no they've raised the gear score to 625 that's basically made all of this uh you know all of this stuff that we needed uh, re irrelevant you know no you can upgrade anything that is 590 gear score or above all the way up to 625 using these umbral shards okay we'll explain that in another video because most people will know what this is now but essentially all of your gear 590 or above you can upgrade but in these dungeons the, the way you do this the way you get these umbral shards there's several different ways but one of the main ones is either dynasty genesis or lazarus soon to be tempest as well they're adding that to the mix they rotate the dungeons once a week okay so for, for for this week or just about to end you have dynasty shipyard now they've upscaled the, the mobs so they're all the level 66 ones uh, so it's a proper fight i know it says recommended level 55 just ignore that and minimum players ignore that it's a five-man raid now what group, group sorry five-man group they don't have raids yet but what are they done here is okay so like i said this week will be dynasty next week genesis next week Lazarus the week after it could be Tempest or whatever so they rotate it so every time that you log in each week there is a fresh dungeon to play and it has a set of completely different mechanics okay you got all different mechanics in here for example you know hellfire the one that's open at the minute enemies explode upon death dealing fire damage enemies apply burn on hit okay this is just basically a fire one that they've had this time but they've also got the void one in there as well and there's loads of different little mechanics that they've added in there vampiric mobs in there as well so like the more damage they deal to you the more they're healing themselves that then you know brings into you want to use weaken or disease for example to reduce all of this and then there's also these other mechanics here that you can see on screen so and, and these rotate as well and it's always random each week so when it goes to genesis next week it might be hellfire again or when it goes to lazarus the time after it might be void and there's a bunch of different ones in there um different mechanics in there and essentially these they start from uh, mutation level one and they go all the way up to level 10. so basically it's ways to repeat these dungeons dynasty at the moment dynasty genesis lazarus soon to be tempest it's a way to uh continue doing these dungeons over and over again if you like because people like to spam dungeons uh but it's to make them interesting you know all the mobs are buffed in there all the mechanics are buffed in there the loot that you get from there is completely different all these new brand new loot sets that you can get from there as well also it's an achievement thing you want to have because you get bronze silver and gold depending on how fast you do it depending on how many times your team dies etc etc till you kill enough mobs you want to get gold from level one all the way up to 10. So you've got an achievement there, you know, this is a new, it's a new fun way. And you can compare with your friends, compare with the people. Oh, we've, you know, we've hit M10, you know, gold, for example, um, on all three. And that's pretty cool. And this is where you get your shards from in order to upgrade your gear. The gear score requirement for each mutation level goes up as well. Starts at 600 for M1, for example. By the time you get to M10, you want to be going in there at 623 or above. And that's for all of your gear, so your overall gear score. So it's really, really tough. But it's it's some, it's a new way to play dungeons in this game. And uh, for anybody thinking that they've just basically left you with the play normal dungeons, they've not. Those three dungeons recycle every single week. Um, and then also they're adding the Tempest one in there. And when they add Tempest, that's going to be spicy for, for the full week. Whilst people get used to that, that's going to be pretty good, you know. So yeah, dungeons are in there. Uh, we know they're adding the, the, the future dungeons in there as well. So that's how, that's the current state of the game for dungeons. Okay, so we just spoke about dungeons. Now let's speak about how you enter those dungeons, okay? Just before we finish the whole orb system, right at the end of this little section, you're going to like what I'm about to say, okay? But don't worry. But this is the current state of the game as of right this second, okay? Okay. You can craft with your 200 stone cutting, you can craft orbs, okay? There is a cooldown on this, and it's about a week, okay? So you can make, like, 
um two genesis a week you can make two tempest a week you can make two lazarus a week or you can make one mutated dungeon a week this is the reason why people charge this is another reason in the game as well oh anybody want to come to this dungeon 1k entry fee okay bear in mind you get that fee back in the gold that you earn but whatever a lot of people don't like that function but this is why people charge because some of these items that you need in order to craft are actually pretty hard to get or pretty expensive if you buy them so essentially people aren't just being greedy saying give me all of this money to enter a dungeon which is dumb they're basically saying look i've actually gone out there and i've got my stone cut into 200 um i crafted them myself it cost me a lot of money this i just like to make some money back okay that's the current state of them you can also go over to the faction vendor as well and you can uh, buy these with your faction tokens earning faction tokens has been massively increased okay compared to what probably maybe when you last played the game if it's several months ago um they, they've, they've massively increased the amount that you earn from this faction board if you scroll right down to the bottom on buy rewards you'll see that you can also buy them from there as well okay you can buy uh, genesis um orbs from here and you can, this resets every basically it says 22 don't know why it says this but essentially you can buy one genesis a day you can buy one lazarus a day orb uh, tempest heart you can buy this this says 22 hours but when i bought if we'll do this now sorry i think this is eight hours okay no they've changed it maybe they've that would literally since this happened the other day they've changed it you could have bought one tempest every single eight hours they've now changed it to tw basically 24 hours uh the mutated one is about three days okay so when you're waiting for the mutated ones so you can buy them from here so there's two different ways how you can gain these orbs okay so anybody thinking oh it's so hard to get them now bearing in mind as well if you're in a guild or a group of mates don't forget okay if there's five of you you've all got one orb that's five runs okay you don't need to charge each other because then you're just giving each other the money back that's just one example if you've all got three orbs between you that's 15 runs of a single dungeon okay so it's not like orbs are ridiculous okay it is a little bit time gain it's a little bit annoying but here's the important point now okay if you don't like the orb system in this game which is fair i'm not an over the top fan of it i understand it but however amazon game studios have already announced that they will be very very soon they will be removing the need for orbs to enter dungeons okay if this is one of the biggest things that you didn't like about the game and this is one of the things that could be stopping you or indeed helping you return to the game they're going to be removing them from the game in the sense of being able to enter the dungeons you don't need them now they've said what they're going to do instead is you can add a um a orb when entering a dungeon if you wish this will then probably just increase the chances that you drop named items or the good loot whatever which i kind of like it's kind of like a bonus multiplier if you like a bit like wearing your luck gear if you want you know you'd wear your luck gear to get a slightly higher chance at getting the named items you would now add one of these orbs if you wish but what that means essentially is you can repeat all of your dungeons as much as you want and you will no longer need orbs that's coming into the game very soon not today of you watching this video but very very soon so again that's one of the reasons that you don't like this game it's being removed maybe that's something that you might want to consider you know okay now on to loot okay everybody in mmos like loot right okay so first of all we've already spoken about the mutations uh dungeons that you can run all of those mutating dungeons have specific brand new armor sets weapon sets with a ton of new perks to basically help you with the other ones for example if you're running dynasty you can drop like dryad stuff in there which is going to be really good against angry earth and then if you're in the genesis one you might drop stuff that's really good for lazarus so essentially you can build all these sets which makes you do extra damage to say all the lazarus ancient mobs and then reduce the damage that you take and then just basically all these brand new sets right however also with the brand new dungeon as well they've also added a brand new set of perks into the game for example trenchant recovery fully charge heavy attacks heal the player for 28 percent of the damage dealt little things like this there's more in there uh we don't uh, this is not a video about going through every single perk and stuff like that but essentially i'm just going to show you some bits and bobs now that i've collected from this dungeon so far and you can see all of these new gear some of these are bis i believe some of the hatchets were well, one for the tank one for the dps i believe that is bis i believe even the sword i've just shown you was, was bis possibly as well for for, for for tanks that could be the thing to get rid of curiosity greed potentially uh, but essentially yeah i'm just going to show you on the screen now as we talk about this some of the new um gear and, and and loot that you can get from all these new dungeons and mutators and stuff like that just basically if you like loot if you had all of the maximum bis gear that you you thought you could have got um before you quit the game again are you going to return to this guess <laughs> sorry to keep repeating myself but it's the main it's the main point of the of the video you know, should you return to new world if loot is one of these issues then you know 
this could be something that you might li like to see this little section of the video uh this might help you come back to the game now don't forget as well all of this gear drops 590 plus just like this one here black guards great axe okay this came to me at 600 gear score i use my umbral shards and i upgraded this all the way up to 625 you know all these little perks in there they all get increased the little percentages the attributes all that kind of stuff right so these are all the kinds of gear that's a blunderbuss there a little example of a blunderbuss if you've never seen one um but yeah so essentially the, these, these are some of the things that you can get from these new dungeons all new um like i said perks on your items all new sets of gear from all the mutations a whole new i think there's like four or five different set, like you got ra uh, raiders i think you've got um nitratans you've got uh what else have we got in here conquerors do you know what i mean there's all these different like is it uh, another tacticians you've got wizened these are all these like different types of uh sets that you can get um from these new dungeons that they've added to the game so yeah if the if the types of loot if the amount of loot that was available in this game was a, a potential uh, reason for you quitting the game and and now you're seeing all this and thinking oh i want to get back in this game i want to get some of this big big boy loot you know okay next section we're going to talk a little bit because there's not too much to talk about here but a little bit uh things like new quests uh roadside events like dynamic roadside events new raffle bones guy that's been added into the game uh little bits and bobs this is gonna be a brief discussion here because there's, there's not like a ton to talk about but it has been added if you like the pve quests in the game um they, you know they, they've they've been added in if you like um dynamic roadside events you know like guild wars 2 have a lot of a lot of these um oh craft attempt failed oh okay uh, if you like those kind of things in the game then you know they, they, they they've been added if you like um more quests in the game pve related you know which you'd like to get some bits and bobs of loot some more story from there as well uh, these dynamic roadside events have been added to different areas in the game not just end game areas there's some like level 30 ish places some level 40 ish places uh, and new mobs that have been added in, into those areas as well just just a freshening up a little bit in, in some of those old, older places um the raffle bones is like this loot guy that runs around he spawns you're 45 seconds to kill him from when somebody sees him uh again all different tiered levels depending on which zone you find him in um if you go searching for him he does drop some really good gear but you could be level 30 ish in the game find him kill him get some really good level 30 gear you could be level you know 40 odd and then again you know 50 odd 60 odd you could get some half decent gear at level 60 as well some drops from there so yeah in terms of like quests and and, and new little mini events and pve stuff like that they, they've all been upgraded in this game as well could be something to think about when when making your decision and should you return to the game okay now let's talk about skins in the game a lot of people in mmos they like customizing their characters and stuff like that now one thing new world doesn't have right now is transmog that's why i'm sadly wearing this big massive tin foil with tinted of purple to suit my beautiful purple afro here yeah it does not it doesn't have transmog right now um it does have skins that you can obviously just like the sword for example that you can overwrite uh, and then change them whenever you want um yeah sadly no transmog hopefully something in the future that, that that'd be really nice and you don't have to wear the actual armor that you're doing or the base skins um but yeah so essentially in, when it comes to twitch prime obviously with amazon link to twitch all that kind of stuff there's a there's a ton of twitch drops that have happened ever since launch uh like a lot of them a lot of sets that are now in the game i'll try and show you a few here just just for a quick example um we can change our skin i can show you some of the ones that i've acquired over time um the crimson plague one this is the latest one where i think it was like uh, shroud and adobe they made this on the stream and then they brought this into the game uh what else have we got in here you know you got this oh, this, this robe one this, this massive big dress if that's what you want to do you want to run around the game in a dress uh, they got some cool ones that you can buy oh the robin hood one that was also free from twitch as well prime game as you can see here so you're always getting free skins added to the game which is really really nice you can buy some of course but like i said these these free ones are, are pretty nice sometimes this one's not too bad uh the uh red azar cloak so yeah if you if you, if you like it i really like this set by the way this looks very uh alliance uh world of warcraft-esque i like this one here the righteous guardian coat i like all that kind of stuff you know and uh, this is a new one that's just actually come out today the divestus harmonizer it's come out with uh with prime gaming so essentially yeah there's always twitch drops every, every couple of months there's always the new prime gaming ones every couple of months and then oh look at this one sources one that's not too bad and then obviously the store as well the store gets updated one of the one of the very few ways you can actually spend money in this game once you've uh once you purchased it you know i think it's like 20 or 30 pounds on steam um that's pretty much the only place you can buy it 
um you can obviously convert some of your money into here now what you will do as well in these prime gaming drops they do give you a handful of uh of these like these coins the, you know, the cash shop coins if you like uh, i think i've got maybe 10 to twelve thousand just from uh, the free ones so you know you, you can get your free skins in here as well but there are um new skins new dyes that they add you know new emotes if you like all this kind of stuff you know you can get all of your emotes and and, and stuff like that these are all in the game <laughs> i'll be honest i i don't use any of these but you know some people do some people love their emotes and the new skins and stuff like that so yeah if you if you if you're the kind of person who maybe at the start of game you're a bit like ah uh, you know none of the skins in here for me none of customizationable options like i said transmog isn't available this is not too bad transmog isn't available yet hopefully that's something they add in the future but the variation of the skins and stuff uh is increasing in this game do you know what i mean not a lot of them are actually really that expensive um you know like it's not like valorant you know what i mean when you buy that kind of stuff off. they obviously have little deals in here as well just before they come off the market um but there's, there's a lot in here a lot of skins i think i've already got this one i just don't like the helmet but yeah so i just thought i'd, I'd mention this as well i just want to try and cover as many different areas in this game as possible um for, for potential people you know if you're looking at this you might think oh yeah might come back into the game to see these kind of skins or whatever um yeah guild wars 2 has a lot of good skins wow has all this transmog all that kind of stuff but there's, there's, there's quite a lot in the game you know it's increasing as well and don't forget all the brand new loot that we mentioned before from dungeons and stuff they've all got their own uh, versions of skins in the game as well uh, you can die customization all the base stuff from the game the skins you can't you can't die these but, but yeah when it comes to skins and emotes and all that kind of stuff they're in the game there's a lot more added does this pique your interest maybe okay one of the the last couple of things i want to talk about in this video is for example a little bit more of an in-game thing here obviously uh in-game uh, economy now there's been times in the past when i played this game and uh, a lot of people played this game and quit and stuff there was items for like for example iron iron ore for example all of these kind of items were 0 0.01 um in in the in the in, in you know it, it in, in the tp it was really really bad you couldn't really make any money it was just flooded everywhere even like auric halcom for example um let's go to well, let's look at auric halcom arrows just as a quick example even these used to all be 0 0.001 you couldn't make any money on them it was it was just like it, it was crazy um but also everything's kind of stabilized nice and healthy now every now and again there are little peaks you will tend to look at i think they look at items that are all selling for 0 0.01 and go right there's absolutely no use for this item in the game on the next little patch we do let's make it usable let's make a new feature let's make you know moats upgradable to the next stage and all this kind of stuff therefore the cheaper moats are actually um now a little bit more expensive and now you know moats are needed in crafting orbs and all this kind of stuff they keep adding things to the game um which which keeps pulling up the economy it makes things more useful makes things more uh worthwhile you know some things are a little little pricey that they could maybe change for example you know you've got like your iron uh guardsmen insignias for example for every time you want to roll a piece of armor which has i think this one is the uh oh this is constitution if you want to make yourself a potential 600 gear score piece of um armor a customization one you'll need 10 of these per one roll oh this is very very expensive but again very very expensive for, for the buyer the crafter but if you're the kind of person who's looting these all around the world you know essentially what i'm trying to say here there's a good economy in the game in my opinion is it perfect absolutely not no way is it perfect because again if you want to roll a ton of these you are going to be out of pocket so fast it's crazy as you can see up here i've got 179k right uh, that's uh, there's plenty of people who, who manipulate the markets they're really good at it they can hit the uh, the gold cap which is 500k maybe they'll change that one day but um yeah i, I think I, all i was trying to show you here is you know there's there's not as many items in this game anymore that are all listed for 0 0.001 like they were on launch where like nothing was worth any money um most items in the game now are worth something there's very very few so yeah the overall economy if you, this is the kind of thing that you like to do you like to buy you like to sell you like to craft you like to just go out there and harvest for 10 hours and chill in like the amazing world that is new world new world is a very good world don't forget running around the place just harvesting sometimes is incredibly chill it's really really good uh, a lot of people like that kind of aspect of the game they've all said the world of new world was amazing a lot of things in the in the game um re really weren't you know but yeah so th there's a little little mini glimpse into the economy nothing too in depth i don't want to bore you too much because some people might not not be caring about this uh, i've got maybe one or two more things to talk about in this video so let's get into them okay one of the final things i want to talk to you about in this video 
is the uh, state of the game in terms of like players. Right. One thing I want to get off the bat straight away here, uh, get off my chest, whatever the whatever the fucking saying is there, right, is I am sick of the amount of people either in New World Global chat or in Twitch chat, like if Asmund Gold streaming or Shroud streaming, and they all come in and go, uh -huh, hasn't this game only got 5k players in the whole entire world ever logging in ever? Sorry to do that annoying voice, but you know what? When I read these comments, I'm like, you're an idiot, okay? Anybody writing those in Twitch chat, I'm sorry. I'm aiming at you, right? Okay, or global chat every now and again, okay? Right, now, don't forget, right? These kind of numbers are concurrent logged in, okay? Or the peak logged in, okay? This, so, for example, let's just say 21,000, right? Is the average players who are logged into the game in that one day. That doesn't mean that they're only, for example, looking at these numbers here, they're only... 21,419.8.8. What's this? Is a bot point eight? You know what I'm saying? Right. That doesn't mean that there's only 21,000 total players in New World ever. That just means that was the average amount of players that were logged in at any one time. Okay? Average amount. So th th this number could be, I'd love to know. I'd love to, I'd love to see the stat out there. Really, really would. I'd love to see the stat on um, m m amount of unique accounts. This would be a lot better. How many unique accounts are logging in? within a 24 or a 48 hour or a seven day period. How many unique accounts are logging in? This number could be 100,000, okay? This number could be 150,000. I mean, I'm not saying in this, I'm just saying this number could be, hundred. there could be 100,000 new world players still logging in. You know, some people only log in once or twice a week. You know, they work, jobs, whatever. Some people log in every single day. Some people play for eight hours straight. Some people play for half an hour, okay? We, we don't know. But I just want to get these numbers off the bat, okay? Don't look at numbers and go, oh my god, there's only 21,000, there used to be this amount. Okay, we all know the numbers have gone down. In almost every single uh, huge game launch, they do. Go look at Elden Ring. Apparently, they lost half a million in like a month or whatever it was. Okay, we don't care. Now, but the biggest thing I wanted to mention here is the peak players, the average amount of players, the first time since the game launched, obviously post-launch, should we say, have actually gone up. Okay? Now, not, a, not an incredible amount. It's not as if, like, you will brought out this patch and then, you know, 50,000 brand new players logged in or whatever. It, it's not a crazy amount. But what it means is it stopped losing players for the last month. Now, bear in mind, this is last 30 days. This isn't last four or five days since the update came out from the time we recorded this video. This is last 30 days. In the last 30 days overall, people have been coming back to the game. This is a okay start it's not amazing it's not incredible this isn't the game saved everybody log in you'll have a half a million players by next week it's not that but what it is is positive signs green numbers signs that amazon game studios you know new world devs that they're doing something right they get in there overall do i think they are there yet yeah, absolutely not i think they've got so much more that they can add fill out all the roadmap there's so many marketing things they could do to bring people back to the game one thing i'd like to mention by the way comment section down below if you agree one thing New World could do, they just done a double XP weekend. That was to come out with the launch of the new weapon, which made sense. Boost your weapon to 20 as quickly as you can, so more people use it. Here's, here's a little idea to help with these numbers, right? Okay. Because I also know that there's a uh, Twitch uh, bounty. So for like New World streamers who get like good views, I might say a couple hundred views or more, there's a current Twitch bounty out, okay? So they're starting to market with these streamers, they're saying that you want to earn a little bit of money to play New World? Okay, you know, come back and try the game. We'll also pay you a little bit of money, okay? There's a little bounty in there, okay? And all that bounty does is it pops up in their Twitch chat and it tells you to click on it and it sends you to the Steam store to check out the game. That's all it does, right? For, from the bounty of the streamers. So if you're a New World streamer watching this game and you get some good views, I would go check that out in your little bounty section. Um, so essentially, marketing, right? They could, they could try and add this, okay? Um, they could try and say, for example, pay a bunch of streamers to come back and play the game and to showcase it, but also try something like a seven day free to play week on Steam. If you don't own a New World account for seven days, pick a time next month, next week, whatever, seven days, okay? Then do the double XP as well, okay? Or, you know, 1.5, okay? Whether it's not double or 1.5, okay? Now, the reason why I would say to do this is, okay? There's no point in them bringing out all of these huge updates, all of these quality of life updates and all of this. Because nobody's going to try the game. Who, okay, I would say this. I fucking love New World, okay? And I've played it so much. Hearing everything about New World, if I hadn't have ever played this game, would I pick up this game now for 20, 30 pounds on Steam and try it? Absolutely not. It's got such a general bad reputation uh, for all the bugs and whatever and the game dying or whatever. There's no way I, I, as a brand new player I would pick up this game. Now, if this game popped up on Steam, 
free to play week double xp and then maybe at the end of that week 50 percent off buying the game should you choose to buy it and continue playing you know what i would look at this and go all right i've heard enough about this new world nonsense let's, let's go try it myself you know this is one thing I, I hope amazon game studios come across this video maybe the marketers or whatever and say free to play week on steam 1.5 or double xp for that entire week and then at the end of that you say to all those accounts that, that have made a brand new account if you want to continue to play the game it's also 50 percent off so you can buy the game for 10 or 15 pounds whatever that money is in your in your country right that's that's one little idea i've got there right but essentially these are just some numbers to look at for the first time ever post all of these updates and there's still so many more updates to come as well we've not even got the pvp ranked and the pvp arenas in here yet imagine what could potentially happen when they add that when they add that back in but yeah the numbers are going slightly up okay so i'm going to end this video pretty much here okay i'm going to ask the question one more time should you return to new world i've gone through the roadmap i've gone through the new weapons i've gone through the quality of life changes the dungeon systems the orbs that go along with it new loot you know uh, new quests and pve stuff skins in the game economy of the game i've not mentioned everything i could possibly mention okay I just try to pick a bunch of things that people always come into my Twitch channel and ask me every now and again. I try to pick those core things and say, look, I'll go and answer them on a YouTube video and then you guys can make your own decision. However, I would like to know, comment section down below, a simple, are you going to try the game again? Would you try if there's some kind of free to play week if you've, if you've never launched, you know, logged into the game? Uh, has this video been helpful to you decide? And I'm not going to tell you, should you come back to this game? That's up to you, you know? Obviously, in an ideal world, I'd love I'd love more people to play New World. It's the game I love. It's a, lo it's a game I love to stream. And it's the game I like to make YouTube videos on. Of course, I would like to. I'm not going to tell you to log back into the game. That would be a biased opinion, you know? That would be a biased comment. That would be dumb. I don't want you to come to my YouTube channel or my Twitch for biased opinions, okay? Um, looking at it overall, I'd probably say, yeah, sure, you should probably come back within the next 30 to 60 days, maybe. Because that's when even more updates are coming. But at the end of the day, I'm hoping all of these uh, things I've mentioned in this video help you make a decision whether you should or shouldn't come back to the game. But if you are or aren't, I'd love you to drop me a follow on Twitch and then come and tell me in my Twitch channel when I'm live if you are or are not going to come back to the game. And also in the comment section down below. And then I'll do the little bit of sellout at the end, of course. I have a really, really small YouTube channel, as you can see. We have like 20 odd subscribers at this, at this point. We only get a couple hundred views maximum on some of the videos that we make. If you'd like to help me out a little bit, drop a sub on the channel, drop a like on the video, comment me something down below for all those algorithm nonsense that they ask for on YouTube. And guys, listen, thank you very much for watching my video. Brace your earphones for the outro because it's quite loud, so you may want to turn the video down. But guys, thank you for watching. Hit me up on all those kind of things. Twitch.tv forward slash Liam H is the biggest one. Check me out there. And I'll catch you guys in the next New World video. <laughs>